Hello and welcome to the 1 160th of a second photography podcast. Today's episode, episode 13, is called Can Anyone Challenge Adobe? Adobe are synonymous with photography software and we'll talk a bit more about their software later. But I'd like to introduce today's guest and today's guest is Ben. And Ben, you're probably used to me saying this and for those who haven't listened yet, would you just like to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. My name is Ben. I'm a photographer and videographer. I've been doing that for around 10 years now. Can anyone challenge Adobe? Well, Adobe really are synonymous with Photoshop. Photoshop is quite synonymous with modern photography and, and other things. Now, Adobe also do other photography things, and they must be a massive company. They do Lightroom. They do Photoshop Elements. They do. They have. They sell stock imagery now, which they've combined with their Creative Cloud project. They do video editing. They do effects. But we've also got those things that we forget about, like PDF, came from Adobe, yeah. um, Acrobat, which everyone uses all the time. They, they do e-learning. They do website building. They do marketing software. Do three D modeling. Do. Uh... Oh, I've probably left some things out. Yeah. I've probably been app, quite general. App design, games creation, mobile game creation. So focusing on photography, and I will allow um, focusing on video editing as well. Really, can anyone beat Adobe at their software? I think as an all-round company that do everything, probably not. Um, with the Creative Cloud, you've got everything that you need in that one place. There are lots of other companies that do very good uh, photo editing and video editing software but for cross use usage across all their platforms I think I don't think there is anyone that can beat Adobe really see I think in photography world it's very difficult to beat them and I think in video editing it's not so much and the reason being if you look at video editing you've got Premiere you've got Avid you've got Final Cut and they're your big ones aren't they yeah now, Final Cut is an Apple product that works really well with Apple machines and it renders a lot quicker than it, Premiere, it doesn't does, it? It does, yeah. But there isn't any more. Apple aren't in photography anymore. They used to have Aperture, which was quite good. Yeah. I, I've never used it. I've, I've heard it's quite good, but they stopped supporting that. Yeah, I used that um, actually before I uh, started using Lightroom. It was quite, it was quite good. Uh, it was a lot more basic. I used a lot of, um, just a lot of sliders, really. Mm. So I, I think video, and we've got your sm smaller things with video. We've got Sony Vegas. You've got other. You've got Cyberlink, and there are an awful lot of video editors out there, and there are some on mobile devices as well. So I think in terms of video, they are quite big, particularly things like After Effects. But I think they are challenged. I think they have photography sewn up. Really, I don't think they get much challenge in terms of photography. No, um, I can't think of what other um, programs will be to rival like After Effects. I'm sure there are some, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. In terms of creating effects yeah, for video? Yeah, creat creativity, what you can do with it. Going back to photography, have you used any challenges to Photoshop? I haven't. Well, I said I used Aperture a long time ago before I got into Lightroom and Photoshop, but since then I've not. Uh, I've not used anything else. You see a lot of people talking about um, like Portrait Pro. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. The either people love it or hate it. It's very marmite program. Personally, I've never used it. Um, I don't see the need to learn another photo editing program now. I now I just use Photoshop and Lightroom. Don't you need to learn every new feature that comes along with an update though for Photoshop? Don't you personally? Because I know you have the subscription model. Depending what the update is, um, I know there's like, hardcore purists out there who memorise every update. I'll look what they are and what new features are available. I'll have a go with some, but I won't be sitting down and uh, while away the hours learning every single thing. And some updates have actually made things worse, haven't they? And people have been going back to an older version, exactly. from what I've read. Like what? I've not found any. I've not had any issues. I thought some updates the new sort of feature just wasn't as good as the one as it, it replaced or it was buggy. Yeah, I've, not, uh, I've not come across anything like that. Personally, I haven't. Fair enough. 
that might be good. Just the stuff, the, the things that I use it for, I may not have come across that. So I started out using um, Photoshop Elements and found it was too restrictive, so I then got Photoshop. And I have used alternatives to Photoshop. I have the standalone version of Photoshop that I bought many years ago. I've used GIMP, and having used Photoshop, I didn't like it. So I got Photoshop for the PC and used PC for a long time. And when I got a Mac, I downloaded GIMP because I didn't want to put photo I didn't want to have to buy it or subscribe to Adobe. So I put GIMP on and I just found it crashed a lot, interestingly. And I found it just wasn't as intuitive. So I just I got rid of it basically. I didn't use GIMP. And then have you heard of Affinity Photo? I have, yes. Affinity Photo I think was 30 quid, so I took a punt on it. And it's pretty much the same as Photoshop, but does things differently. So I do have need to do a bit of blurring and using layers on when I do things on Mac and I use Affinity. But it was like relearning to ride a bicycle, basically. Yeah, that's that's one reason why I don't want to use other programs because I'm, I know how to use Photoshop and then to have to learn a whole new way of doing the same stuff that I can already do. Even like selecting a colour using the dropper is different somehow. It took me ages. To, I had to read tutorials on how to use affin Affinity. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not Photoshop. Some people have said it's better than Photoshop. I think it's just, it's almost as good. It's 95% as good. When you consider the price of it, yeah, it's way better than Photoshop. But in terms of a piece of software, if I do prefer Photoshop. Yeah, if financially, if you're just starting out with photo editing, have a look at like have a look at the other options available. Um, I I pay a monthly subscription for the Adobe Cloud, but if it was just a one-off price and I've still got the updates, then that'd be far more preferable. And sort of challenges for Lightroom. Have you heard of DxO Mark Optics? Uh, I have not. No. So that has the cataloging feature. So Lightroom, you can edit and catalog and export pretty much what you do in Lightroom. And you can do that with DxO Mark software. And it's around, it's about a hundred pounds, I think. But you, the, and it's actually, some things are better. So again, I got a free version. They were giving it away for free and I got a free version. And some things are better. I think the noise reduction is better. They've got a really good noise reduction engine. Um, and you, the correction is better. So every time it detect, every time you take a picture, it downloads, what you know, the modules for that camera yeah. and that lens, and you can do a, the correcting is better. And I think it's probably better for landscapes. The thing I don't like is you can't do local adjustments. You can only do global adjustments. No. So you can't darken one part of the image. It's all of it. Although I think in the new one, you can, in the new update, you can do local adjustments. But for me, that's where it falls down. I think in some areas it is better than Lightroom. But lack of local adjustments, lack of brushes, lack of gradients, and you know, the gradient filter and the radial filter. Oh, there's no cloning. There's no cloning and healing, which you get in Lightroom. Yeah. So then so, you'd be. Doing, using it in that program and then have to import it into another program to finish it off anyway. And again, it it was where I needed an image editor on the Mac. So I came across a deal where I could get it for free, so I got it for my Mac. Still use Lightroom on the PC as my main money, really. Didn't want to have shell out again for another one on the Mac. Yeah. So having different operating <coughs> systems and using them for different scenarios does mean that I do look at the alternatives for the second computer. Um, the other one is Capture One, which gets quite good reviews. Yeah. But um, the other thing about Lightroom is the tethering option where you can shoot and it goes straight into Lightroom with a cable. Capture One does that. I think Capture One does that really well. But I've not used, I've not used Capture One. I've seen sort of reviews of it and comparisons between that and Lightroom. Um, you get a slightly different raw image out of camera without doing any editing, but I think Capture One is primarily designed for medium format cameras, really. Well, yeah, that's 
it's not, I've not, as I say, I've not used that. And there's Luminar. And I think I've got, I think I've got a four pound Lightroom equivalent for the Mac as well, which works quite well, but, and you can do local adjustments, but the cataloging feature isn't there. I've not used Luminar, which I think comes from uh, Mac Fun or whatever they're now called. And it's mainly a Mac one. But yeah, I don't think anyone quite does as well. They get close to what Adobe does, but I don't think anyone quite equals it or surpasses Adobe's efforts. No, I think I think to do that you'd probably have to have a multitude of programs to have and then do certain things in one program and then import it into another to do the next bit and then into another. Mm. Whereas like you say, Photoshop and Lightroom, you just do pretty much everything you need. And they work hand in hand really well. Yeah. And you can also sync with mobile, can't you? you if can, you've got yeah. the subscription plan. Yeah. If you don't have the subscription plan, you can't. I have um, tried using the Photoshop uh, app, but it's it's all right for ba very basic stuff, uh, basic editing, but you couldn't do it long term, I don't think. No, but I think the Lightroom, again, I haven't had it. It's only things I've read and seen. The Lightroom mobile app means you can take a raw image with your say iPhone maybe do a few adjustments if you need to and then it will sync with your it will end up on your computer won't it while yeah. syncing so I think it's a good way to get good images out of your iPhone um, but yeah I don't yeah I don't think anything will ever beat the Adobe products but do you think the subscription model hurts Adobe I think it has definitely put a lot of people off now, even the basic photographer package now they've upped the price is 120 pounds a year and that's 120 pounds a year every year until you cancel it whereas what they used everything used to be one off price or if you could find somewhere just download a cracked copy but even those days you those you can't find these days and then everything has to be updated and then as soon as you update it it will stop working Whereas now, if you pay a one-off fee, uh, well, I'm not sure, do they charge you for updates or? Yes and no. So I've always had standalone Lightroom. So incremental updates, like you might have Lightroom 5 and Lightroom 5.1, they come out, it's free. But I think I've, pa I've done two paid upgrades. So I think I had Lightroom 4 and then I think I've, pay not as much as Lightroom 5 but sort of halfway yeah. to upgrade to Lightroom 5 and I've upgraded to the most recent one I paid 60 quid to upgrade because um, I was hoping to get the dehaze tool but it, it wasn't there strangely oh. um, but I wanted the ability to do that I in Lightroom I know I knew you could do um, HDR which was really good yeah and it wasn't like that hideous HDR it was subtle HDR and I couldn't do it in my version of Lightroom so I did upgrade to the most recent one and I did a paid upgrade and <laughs> I've not actually used it <laughs> um, wouldn't you know but that's the last one that, that, that they're gonna do they're not gonna do any more upgrades to that and yeah. I suspect they won't do any incremental upgrades unless there is a problem so yeah that's my lightroom journey finished i will not i can't go any higher without buying the subscription plan and the subscription plan puts me off using the adobe products yeah it is it came well the the full package for everything is about 55 pounds a month but that's i think well i'm not sure what the package options are because there's the photographer's package which is lightroom and photoshop um i'm not sure if you can add certain uh, options to it so if, like say you just want photoshop lightroom premiere after effects and audacity for audio editing uh, i don't know if you can just add those to your plan or will you have to get or is that is that two plans or three plans yeah so you talked about audacity that i think it's something like adobe on stay or something like that isn't it but yeah there's everything all in all different plans where you you should be able to just pick and choose which options you want and say right i'll pay 
an extra six pound a month for that program instead of uh, paying 55 pound for everything some of which i can't even use on my mac because they're pc only yeah i mean the subscription plan makes sense where so i i have need to use it something called adobe captivate which is a really good piece of software but i might only need to use that a couple of times a year yeah it makes sense to just subscribe to it for a month and do all my projects in that month rather than buying it outright for a huge amount of money that makes sense to me but something i'm going to come back to again and again and again like lightroom doesn't make sense to be dependent on that subscription model no i'd much rather buy it outright and hence why i've looked at alternatives because i really don't want to be tied in no it, to does, Adobe. it does it builds up even the basic one i said it's 120 pounds a year you got it for 10 years mm. 1200 pounds you shouldn't be spending that on pro like programs which are then you just download them and basically borrowing them as soon as you end your subscription you can't use them mm. but you spend 1200 pounds on software over 10 years you should have that to do what you want with like you used to be able to so maybe in the short term it has the subscription model has hurt them but like you say long term there will be people who just let it keep subscribing for 10 years yeah and spend more than they would have originally buy if they bought the standalone program yeah and i guess if you want the most modern version the subscription model is probably quite good you don't have to keep buying standalone software it, you, you've always you're always working on the most well with, modern um, version with premiere on my um laptop uh, i'm the furthest i can go now is uh premiere uh, like 17 and it's my ram isn't enough to download the 2018 version it actually says that my computer isn't good enough so i'm stuck with 2017 and because it's a mac you can't easily upgrade your ram can you no which is a whole other debate yeah 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 pcs are definitely better for upgrading and yeah I, I, yeah maybe that's a, that's a good episode that that we can do in the future isn't it yeah so i don't think and and to summarize i don't think anyone can challenge adobe or successfully challenge them not not one program or one company for an all-round everything you need no you'd need quite a few different programs from quite a few different people to match adobe i think and they'd have to play together as well so Lightroom and Photoshop work very well together. Yeah. And these okay. other programs would have to work well together, I think. Right. Thank you very much, Ben. So we've been talking about can anyone challenge Adobe? No, I think is the answer at the moment. You've been listening to the 1 160th of a second podcast, which I'm getting better at saying, I must admit. Do leave us a comment if you want to interact and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>